Cyber insurance is poised for growth, with more players coming into the market to cover a growing number of businesses. Insurance Journal recently spoke with Graham Newman, Business Development Director of CFC Underwriting, about the increased need for cyber and privacy liability coverage, especially given the surge in social media. Cyber insurance has been around now for 10, 11 years as a product, and it's been in its early infant stages, and we're just starting to see it at its most exciting point. Uh, I think people estimate the size of the market now to be between about $400 and $5 million in terms of total size. It's in North America. Uh, but the estimates in the market at the moment are saying that's going to grow by three or four times over the next couple of years. So now is an incredibly exciting time to be involved in the market. We've probably seen most recently one of the biggest breaches in history. So it was a breach involving Harlem Payment Services, where 100 million credit card details were compromised in the space of two weeks. And that's the biggest breach in history. So it's a time when people are thinking about it, uh, people are talking about privacy liability, and, and are generally concerned about it. So I think it's an exciting time to be in the industry. Privacy liability is a concern. But how does a cyber and privacy liability insurance product work? Our CMP product has been around now for about 10 years. It's a standalone modular policy that's designed to protect companies against the exposures they face from using technology, which is great because nearly all, all companies use technology in some way, shape or form in their businesses now. The policy comes in a third party section which covers all the major liabilities from privacy liability through to media exposures such as IP infringement and defamation. We also cover statutory duties relating to e-commerce. We have virus liability, hacking liability. And then we have a first party section, which includes uh, protection for a company's own losses associated with uh, data breaches, security breaches, or accidental damages to their data assets. It's interesting because these days, the servers and the computer equipment that the data sits on is worth far less than the actual data itself. And yet a lot of people take time to ensure the equipment and not the data. We also cover business interruption, computer crime, and brand protection. When you have a data breach, the very first thing that's triggered is normally a breach notification. Breach notification is required under various state laws. Right now, there are 46 different state laws, which makes life quite complex if you have a multi-state breach, and quite expensive when you have to have a lawyer to draft a letter that works for every single different state law. But the letter is really your first line of defense against a claim, so it pays to get that right. Then you have to print it and you have to send it to all the customers who are potentially affected, which can be a very costly business. The trend right now as well is to offer some form of credit monitoring service. Uh, so what we typically see at the moment is about a 20% take up rate of the actual credit monitoring services themselves. So that's the breach notification. Of course the problem is when a letter goes out saying that you've lost somebody's information, that can often give rise to clever attorneys looking for potential class action lawsuits. That's if the FTC haven't got to you first, where there can be investigations. Uh, and if it comes down to uh, healthcare information, we might see the HIPAA regulations kicking in and different types of investigations. So really, when it's a privacy breach, you have lots of potential different exposures, from the cost of sending out a letter to potentially defending a liability suit and maybe paying some damages. There are a lot of potential different exposures. The question is, how have the risks changed with Web 2.0 and the growth in social media? When cyber liability was first developed, probably back in the dot-com boom, it was being designed for companies, the, the dot-com startups, the Amazons, the Ebays of this world. These were guys that had no physical presence. Their storefronts were online, electronic. Their assets were really their data. And what they were worried about was trying to find an insurance product that would protect them if they had a hack attack or a virus that brought down their store and took them off the virtual high street for a uh, prolonged period of time. That's where the product started. Then around 2003, when California brought in its data breach notification law, people started to worry about privacy liability. And that's where more of the interest has started to develop in the product. And as those laws spread across 46 different states, that became a really hot topic. Of course, today in 2010, there are more worries for people. Everybody's now using social media in some way, shape, or form. I saw a statistic saying that 85% of businesses now use social media to promote their business. And that means everything from Twitter and Facebook to blogs and sites like this. That's making everybody a publisher and a journalist in some way, shape or form. So that's what people are worried about now. As Newman noted, one reason to have cyber and privacy liability coverage is to cover the cost of notification. 
but with nearly every state having different notification requirements, is there a need for several liability products? The toughest part of data breach notification laws is that they're pretty much different in every single state. Right now, they're spread across 46 different states. And those laws all stemmed from the Californian law, but there are lots of quirks. Quirks relating to encryption of information, uh, points where the breach notification laws are triggered, and what needs to be disclosed within the documentation itself. It's complex. We've seen the startings of the first federal breach notification law, which came under the High Tech Act for business associates of healthcare um, companies. Those laws themselves have definitely driven and changed people's perception of privacy liability and driven the need for insurance. And that's one of the, the major talking points when it comes to this type of insurance. It's interesting because in Europe we don't have data breach notification laws and the natural reaction for most firms is to try and sweep it under the carpet and keep it quiet. Of course with the existence of the laws that we have over here, attitudes have to change. You're absolutely right. If you look at the number of publicly notified breaches, it's still at a relatively low level. People still think that they can maybe get away with it in some way, shape or form. But the tide's definitely turning. Failure to notify can give rise to significant fines. The notification itself is also the very first line of defence. So if you fail to notify, you're leaving yourself massively exposed to huge potential fines and also to future class action lawsuits. So any company that feels they can brush this under the carpet in the modern internet world, where you see bloggers, uh, where you see uh, viral media pushing messages out very, very quickly, a failure to notify can actually have a much bigger brand impact than notifying itself. We actually saw something happen uh, in the wake of some of the very big breaches, like the Heartland breach that was well publicized. But we saw there was a company that managed to react very, very well in a positive way to the breach. And that can actually give positive publicity if it's done in the right way. Given the growth in companies entering the cyber insurance market, independent agents and their customers should carefully evaluate who they work with. I believe there are now 26 different markets or products operating in the cyber arena, and there's probably many more operating in the technology area. Ten years ago, people didn't want to touch technology companies. They felt uncomfortable, they were uncertain about the risks that they presented. Now it seems like an easy way to make some money. Of course that's not true. When it comes to technology claims, it's not about frequency, it's about severity. When they have a claim, you really want uh, an insurer who understands how the dynamic of the claims, that understands the, the business of your end client, and knows how to handle them.